time is gonna take so much away, but there's a way that time can offer you a trick. Time is gonna take so much away, but there's a way that time can offer you a trick. You gotta do something that you can get. All right. So, like I said earlier, what we're gonna do here is very exciting. We're starting off a playlist to where you can learn basic programmatic skills. So everything is going to be saved to this playlist on my channel called Basic Programmatic Skills. And then also I'm going to uh, put it up on my GitHub. Uh, it'll be under a repository of the same name if you want to go check that out. And I'll put the links to the GitHub repo and all that stuff in the, uh, in the video description. But I want to keep these videos short. So I want to cover small bits of information each video. So as to not overwhelm a person with a bunch of different stuff. So today, the first video, the first thing that we're going to talk about on this little journey of learning to program is Big O. So what is Big O? Big O is something that you got to learn pretty early on because if you don't learn it, you're just going to be writing spaghetti code that's not... You're, you're, you're not going to know what's the wrong avenue that you're taking towards solving a problem. Basically... Question one, what is it? It's an abstraction to help talk about the time it takes to run a program, for a program to run. What does that mean? So basically there's a lot of math involved in, in, in calculating Big O, and I'll link, a, I'll link a video in the description to where if you want to get a more in-depth look at how they come up with these, uh, with these abstractions, you can look into it. Things like Theta, Omega, Big O, uh, just a lot, it's a, it's a lot of math, but the thing is, is that on the computer science aspect of it, you don't necessarily have to understand the math so much as you have to understand the implementation of why you would call something a certain notation. So question two is like, what are the different types? So you have O of N, O of 1, O of log N, O of N log N, O of N squared. These are the main ones that you're going to be using. There are others. Um, but like I said, normally most of the time in any kind of like software engineering, web development, coming up with solutions, th these are the ones that you're going to use. So today in the first video, instead of learning about all of them and just blorting out a bunch of ideas, let's just learn about the first two that are pretty easy to learn about, uh, linear time and constant time. And it'll be a nice way to, to duck your feet into the waters of understanding this stuff without getting overwhelmed, right? Again, with this playlist, I would suggest that you learn everything in order, that you don't just jump ahead, because part of the understanding is progressively overloading what you understand. Small bits of learning, instead of just being like, well, I get this, let me just jump ahead. I would really suggest like going through all of this stuff, making sure that you understand it at a deep level. You know, So first two that we're going to look at today with coding examples, and like I said, I want to keep these short, so we'll just cut to the chase. We're going to look at linear and constant time. So let's go to our code editor here. I'm just using VS Code. I got my integrated terminal opened up down here, and I'm in that uh, Git master branch. Remember, all this stuff is going to be up on GitHub. So the first, uh, the first two time complexities we're going to look at is linear time. That's O of N, so big O of N, and constant time, and that's big O of 1. Okay, so what does this mean? So basically, let's do the constant time example first because it's a little bit easier to understand. So let's say that we have a function, and this function is just called constant, right? And this function takes in an array of size we don't know what. We'll just call it array of size n because that's what we're normally referring to when we talk about n is the length of the input. So when you're calculating big O notation, one thing that you want to ask yourself is, does the length of the input affect the time that it takes to complete the output. So if we have, if all this function does is returns r at zero right here, that's all it does. That's all this function does. So if we just console log constant, oops, with an r passed in, and let's just say that the r is gonna equal, let's just say one, two, One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's our input. So if we run this, no big O. Ah, uh, we've already got an error. Did I spell that wrong? I totally spelled that wrong. Constant. Okay, let's run it again. Trying to avoid them errors, dog. Okay, so it just returns one. So here on line six, it's just gonna return 
the first element in the array. So the question you have to ask yourself is, does the running of this, is it affected by the size of this? So if this array were extrapolated out by, you know, a million, if it goes all the way up to a million, does that affect the amount of time it would take to run line six? No, it does not. So it doesn't matter the size of the input. You're going to have a constant time that it would take to run this function. It's just going to take the same amount of time independent of how large the input size is. Whenever you run across something like that, that's what's called constant time denoted by O of 1. The 1 here meaning how many operations it would take to actually run this, right? So that's the, that's the idea, is that we can, as many operations as we want, as, I mean, as, as large of an input as we want, it's just going to take a constant time to complete this function. Now, on the other hand, let's make another function called linear. And let's say that linear takes in an array as well. And what it will do is, since we're working in JavaScript, we can go ahead and use a, a for each loop. So we'll just go r dot for each lm. That feeds it. That's a callback with lm you get access to. And then we'll just return. Uh, let's actually console log it. We'll console log lm. Right? So let's go down here and run this, and it's linear with the R passed in. So let's run that. We'll go down to our integrated terminal and run it. So what you can see here is that the output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So in this function, if we extrapolated out the array by a million here, would that affect the runtime of this function? Yes, it would, because as the array grows in length, then the time that it would take to output and finish running this function grows in a linear fashion, meaning if you had a graph, right, and you just said on your xy axis, if there were one, one element in the array, then no matter how many times you ran this, it would take the number of n calculations. If there were a million elements in the array, the number of n here would be a million calculations for this to run. So basically the big takeaway from this is that constant time is not affected by the size of the array. Linear time is affected by the size of the array. And you're at worst case, you're only running through the array one time. So it's directly proportional, proportional at worst case of running through the length of the array the n number of elements the array is long. That's how many calculations it'll take. So another really quick thing here, and I don't, I'll do another video about actually uh, simplifying your big O code, but let's just say that we had a let right here, let uh, i equal uh, r at zero, right? Let's just say that we had that. So now we technically have two operations done here. So technically this would be denoted as O, uh, let's see here, O of 2n. But the thing is, is that it's really not going to matter. It's still just running through the execution context one time without looping. So you can lose this constant right here, and it would just be O of n. Because you could even have 100, like, lets here. Let, you know, and do 100 things. But if it's not looping through the array, and it's only running through the ex execution context one time, you don't want to be like 102n or something like that. It always just breaks down to n because you can drop the constants. What you can't drop are like if you had an exponent right here, if it was O of n uh, squared right here, you cannot drop this exponent. But constants, you can. So for right now, that seems like a good stopping point. Uh, we've learned about what big O notation is. We've learned about our first two uh, types of big O notation, linear and constant time. We learned that linear has to do with the length of the array. The length of the array or the length of the input is going to affect the time that it takes to run the code in linear time. In constant time, the size of the input is not going to affect the runtime whatsoever. It's going to be a constant time, O of 1. Okay, cool. So that was the first video. In the next video, we'll move on to some more complex time complexities, and I'll actually start showing you how to uh, simplify big O notation that you come up with. So just hang in there. 
Uh, and it's going to get more interesting and more complicated as we go. All right, take it sleazy.